The first video we're going to talk about is just the uh, the drift. You're going to see that this is 2011, so I'm going to let it go from here. So what we're going to do with this is we're simply going to set the hip. We're going to pinch right here. Before I reach the top of my lift, I'm simply thinking that the butt's in front of the shoulder. By getting the butt out in front of the shoulder, as we discussed in the last video, butt's out in front of the shoulder, I've created an angle. So as I start to drive and work down against the ground, it projects the hips forward at a higher speed. Now, the problem that I found with that was that uh, <clears throat> I was just pushing. You would notice that I would just get into a squat position. I would just push out. Now, the next one, what we're going to discuss is something that I look back, and I actually still see people doing this, but I was trying to use my kneecap to turn down towards the ground to spin the hips, and that's exactly what it did. It just spun the hips. I'm going to cheat the backside just a little bit. You'll see that my foot turns in, and it's just the idea this is internal rotation. We want to think that the back knee is actually driving down, and it's going to force the front hip to open. So this alpha male relationship, it's what's actually turning our hips. So when I start to get to this point, and we, and we take the rubber band, we put it above our ankles, we're going to get the idea that it's our back hip that's actually rotating around the front. It's the next one is going to feature Caleb Cotham, the pitching coach for the Philadelphia Phillies. I'm sure he's proud to be in this one. But here is, is when I actually believe that you could work the arm in isolation. So we would train the arm action in isolation only for the same old problems to pop back up because they had no idea about the middle of the body at this time. Oh actually turns us. That's our rotation. So as we start to go, we're going to make our throw. Now we could look at that as an arm action drill if that's our intent, but the second aspect of that is just the feeling of separation. The separation occurring right here to where you just feel a stretch across the ribcage. So I'm going to have Caleb demonstrate that. This one was another variation. We called it the, the figure eight drill, and I think you'll start to see it some with the lasso now. But again, this is just another way to try to isolate the arm. And, and I, I didn't really consider how actions created uh, reactions or how the effect of the middle of the body would have on the arm. So that's why I was doing some of the things that I was doing, only to learn later that it, it wasn't right. So the figure eight, what we're going to do with the figure eight, we're going to start here. And the first feel that we're going to start with is we're actually just going to Turn this knee into this knee to feel the pinch. So it's here, make the throw, rotate the back of the arm moving. Our feel for this, and this is a good arm action drill because this is the intent for most guys is just to create that feel, to get it moving. The, intent, the feel is just gonna be behind the shoulder blade. You're gonna see as he starts to go, it's driven by the elbow, the arm comes up, it lays back, and then he's gonna just make the throw. Next one was year 2012, and that was when I created the mastermind system. At this point, um, I was working backwards from, from the end of the delivery and working backwards as far as backwards training. We, we don't do that anymore. Uh, and the next thing was, uh, I got this from Paul Nyman, but it was the idea that the intention shapes the drill. A drill could be anything. I know that's used still a lot today, and it's got some valid use. But what I found was that intention alone was not enough to solve your problem. How we're going to do that, we're going to start at the end of the delivery and we're going to work backwards. So there's going to be four key points with each drill. Uh, the first is goal awareness. What's your intent? It's the intent behind the movement that's going to shape the drill for you. Next video, you're going to see how I was actually trying to uh, shape or create hip shoulder separation by starting with my toes pointing, which you'll see similar to the roll ins and then over-exaggerating, closing off my shoulders to try to manufacture separations, which isn't necessary. Taking the elbow, rotating it in the opposite direction. Again, we're over-exaggerating this movement. We're not saying you get in the pitching delivery. And his idea, his intent, intent to create a field. That is that is as just I a start to go across the rib cage. It's that glove well, side that begins to initiate rotation. Of, of loading the hips. So you can see that everything that I talk about on Twitter is exactly what I've done in the past. It's just that I learned, and it was just... A humble lesson to realize that you've been doing it for 20 some years and then to realize that, hey man, none of the stuff that you've been doing is, is necessarily working and there's a better way to do it. So here is just uh, loading the hips. Enjoy. Make a throw. Um, two, as we start to lift, we're actually working down into the ground and, and starting. Next one. Uh, this is the time again with the, the mastermind system. At this point, again, I knew nothing about the middle or how it worked, truly worked proximal to distal. So I was having my pitchers uh, try to initiate rotation with the glove side. I think that's now more commonly known as glove side disconnect. But once I figured out more from using the belt and how the, the middle works, guys that move through the middle efficiently and, and get on plane and ride the slide, they don't have glove side issues. They don't have a problem rotating. 
but at this point in my career, I had zero idea. This, this remains here, and then as he starts to go, he's just gonna create some small circles. And at that point, his feel, you can stop, his feel is just gonna be behind the glove side shoulder. He's gonna to start to feel a pinch with that. So he's gonna go, as he's gonna do this, he's just gonna start with small circles with the glove side, and his idea, his intent, is that as I start to go, it's that the last video I want to show you is, is just one of the early, and you'll even see, look at the belt here. This is, this is not even the, the belt that was even, even patented. This was a crude device here. But by this time, we had learned that by pointing the toes at the target, what you're going to see with roll-ins and pivot picks, it's not the way to go. Uh, it creates some more balance and stability, but less rotation. Guys tended to push, so that's when we started to change the positioning of the back foot, which made a huge difference on the downstream later on in the delivery. It's been changed. We no longer turn our foot like this. We actually keep the foot in a straight line versus turning in. And the reason that we do this is what I found is that the higher level guys had no problem with this, but with the lower level, the amateur guys, what they would tend to do is they would get to the ball of their foot and they would simply push. So it was more so extending the back, back hip versus rotating the back hip. So we got to talk with you about was all this stuff. This was, you know, by the time that I had realized this was 2013-14, that I was doing all this stuff. And by the time that I had actually realized what I was doing and how much more harm I was doing than good, um, it, was, it was humbling to say the list. But it, had it not been for Dr. Seals and, and what he had taught me and introduced at Palooza about hip proprioception and, and how the pelvis really works and how it's con and the mind-muscle connection and how it all works, man, I would still be doing the same things. But now, luckily for me, I've, I've had a chance to revise my stuff. I've had a chance to test it, try it, throw it away, and then start all over again. So that's where I'm at, and it's a, it's a constant learning. Uh, it's a journey that never really stops. But it's very, very humbling to realize you think you know something, only to realize that what you think you know just ain't so.